Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the first video of a series of videos in which we will be creating a game. Uh, the game, I'm not entirely positive what it's going to be yet. Um, I'm kind of judging along the lines of a top-down shooter kind of 2D retro. Maybe something kind of Geometry Wars mixed with a platformer. I really don't know right now, and that's not the important part. Um, the important part is... This is the boring introduction setup video that I hate having to do, you hate having to sit through, but it's a necessary evil. And so we'll, we'll start right here. Um, we're going to be using something called libgdx uh, to help us achieve our, our final goal. Uh, libgdx is a as you can see right here, a game development framework. Um, it's kind of an extension of the lightweight Java game library that gives us um, more stuff, I guess. Um, it abstracts things better, and if you don't know what a, uh, an abstraction is, um, think of it as a car. Um, the majority of people who drive a car have no idea how the internal combustion of a car engine actually works. But it doesn't matter because all they need to know is to make the car go, you push down the gas pedal. To make it stop, you push the brake to turn, you turn the wheel. They don't need to know how it actually works. They just have access to it that way. So it kind of abstracts everything away and makes it easier. And that's what this is going to do because we don't want to have to deal with um, setting up textures and kind of... Uh, or kind of stuff like that with OpenGL and stuff like that. And this is going to help us not saying that we're, you know, not intelligent enough to understand it, but it means that we don't have to spend the time actually doing it. And the cool thing about libgdx, not only does it save time because of the uh, way it abstracts and, uh, you know, everything, but it's also cross-platform. Um, it's written in Java, so you already know that it's going to work on, well, most of it's written in Java. Um, the uh, very CPU intensive things are actually written in C and C++, so it is also a very efficient uh, framework. But it's also written, uh, it also works on Android and on WebGL, which is in a uh, br internet browser. So that's also a really cool thing and we'll see how that works later as I once I set up the project um, if you go to the features page it's libgdx.badlogicgames.com I'll try to post all the links in the description should I remember I'm gonna try to make this setup video relatively quick so you don't have I don't bore you to death with mundane details but we can take a quick look and look at how it, we have access to OpenGLES 1.0, 1.1 and 2.0 uh, that include, point out includes shaders and stuff like that. Um, this also not only does have 2D APIs, it also has 3D. Uh, we're not going to be using the 3D just for simplicity's sake and time's sake in making this. Um, the input handling is really nice on this. The audio is really nice on this too. Math and physics is cool because it has a wrapper for box 2D uh, physics library, which is really cool if you haven't had a chance to look at that you might want to. Um, this also has custom co uh, collections. Collections are things like arrays and lists. Uh, those are pretty, it's pretty awesome because it uh, is meant to save garbage collection the way that they're written here, which is perfect for games. Uh, these four tools, we'll probably use three of them. We may or may not use the particle editor. Everything else we will use. The particle editor, I'm not sure about. Now, now that we've got that out of the way, we know what libgdx is, how awesome it is, blah, blah, blah. If you go to the Google Code homepage for it, which I will definitely post a link for, and you click on Wiki, you're going to see a bunch of stuff, including prerequisites. I'm going to assume if you're watching this video, you have the JDK and Eclipse installed. Um, I'm not going to walk you through how to install these other two plugins, because if you click on it, they, it hold your hand right through it. But I will say this, if you have the newest version of Eclipse and you click on the Google Web Toolkit, it says 3.7 here. When you type that in, you need to change this 3.7 to 4.2. And you're going to follow everything else the exact same way 
all the way through. And if you follow that, you're golden. Um, really not too hard, I promise you guys. If you have any questions, I will leave a way to contact me in the description. It'll probably be Twitter just because it's the easiest because um, my email is loaded. I have get ridiculous amounts of emails. Um, I maybe I'll set up a second email address to make it easier. I might I might do that for you guys. I think that would be pretty good. But um, okay, we get that. We've gotten the prerequisites out of the way. You're gonna go down the tools, click on GDX Setup UI. You're gonna want to click on. You can also directly download it using this link at the bottom of the post. You see, I just scrolled down a little bit. And there it is. You click that link, it'll start downloading right away. Um, should be right away. If not, well, there might be a trouble with your internet connection or something. But um, I already have it downloaded. And whoa, XSplit right there looks crazy. But um, if you go to the GDX setup UI, which I have right here, open that puppy up, we're actually going to call our game if you would care to actually type, there we go, Angry Mason. So that's what we're gonna call it. I have an idea for a game, and that's what I'm going with, com.riley.angrymasons. Um, the package named, um, you usually write it in reverse um, kind of URL notation. I don't know the actual technical term for it offhand, but um, the way you do it that way is it's meant to be a unique identifier. Um, which it's fairly important that it's a unique identifier when you with Android and stuff like that, especially. So you usually do com, or um, if you're from somewhere else that doesn't use com, I would assume you would use your own personal whatever it is that your uh, country uses. Um, and then usually the second thing is your name or your company, and the last part is your project that you're working on. Now we're going to change this game class also to Angry Masons. And for the destination, we're going to pick this game folder. You don't have to do that. I'm using it. I'm going to set up a repository for you guys so that I can update it episode by episode and you guys can follow along and look at the code as it changes. And hopefully that makes it easier for you guys to learn. At least that's the theory and that's my goal. Now we've got step one out of the way. We got two, three steps to go. Didn't see step four down there almost. I'm assuming this is going to be red for you, and that's because you haven't downloaded libgdx yet. Don't worry, this UI makes it easy to do so. If you want the stable version, you click S. If you want the nightlies, you click on the package with the N. Nightlies are um, when the code gets changed in their repository, um, nightlies get compiled uh, usually nightly, hence why they're called nightlies. So it has all those changes from day to day um, in between the stable releases. However, that means that certain things may not be completely stable. So if you're feeling ballsy, you can click on the N. If you're feeling not so hot, click on the S. Um, either way, I would I would assume the nightlies are in, a, are in pretty good, actually. I think the nightlies are in good shape right now for everything we'll be doing, so you don't have to worry. We're also going to be using the Universal Tween engine, which is kind of cool. I have yet to get to use it, but I'm excited to try it out. Um, tweening is the actual uh, helps uh, the interpolation of objects, which means um, it could be like moving things or uh, changing the transparency or changing the color, basically changing something over a period of time. Um, because you know things don't just go from A to A to C, they go from A to B to C. So you you have to interpolate that over time, and um, that helps us do that. So you're also going to click on the S for that. Click on that. Whew, going quick here, and you're going to see these awesome four projects or four folders listed right here. That's what you want. You want to click Generate Projects, and look at that. All done shows up, and that is what you really want to see. Um, you can go ahead and exit out of this, because I will tell you everything that I told you at the end of that. And you're going to go to File and to Import, and underneath gen the General tab, 
you're going to see existing projects in a workspace. Click Next. Browse and go to wherever you put those. Um, mine are in the desktop and under a game folder. I click OK. Make sure they're all checked. You can actually copy the projects into your workspace. I will not be doing that. Um, and just click Finish. And uh, let's play around with LibGDX real quick while we uh, have a minute of time. And under the, oops, wait. You're going to want to go to Window, Show View, and Problems. This is because when you import the HTML one, you will get an error. And it should be the error that says the Google Web Toolkit SDK jar is missing in the directory. If you right click that, go to Quick Fix, click on the Synchronize option, and click on Finish. That will remove that error. I'm not worried about the rest of those uh, warnings. I'll get to them when I get to them. I don't think they'll cause problems, but I could be wrong. Um, you're going to right click the HTML one. You're going to click Run as a web application. It's running in development road and development mode, and I also think it's running as a in debug as well. I believe it might, may or may not be, but anyway, it causes it to run to run really slow. Um, but if we wait a second here, we will see a picture pop up. A pretty picture. There we go, and that is our application as it stands right now. Um, yeah, so you can read that if you want, but I'm about to show you what it says, basically. Go to the desktop, right-click that, run as a Java application. So make sure main is selected. And lo and behold, it looks just like it did in the browser. And now you get to see what makes this so cool, because if you open up the desktop uh, source code, and go into main, you will see that there's nothing here that should display an image. And the, that's pretty cool, right? You're like, whoa, does it magically display it? No. If you go into the uh, main folder up here, the one that doesn't have an extension at the end of it, and go into the source code for that, um, you will actually see that all of the uh, image rendering code is right in here. And so this is all linked to the individual, or those individual projects are all linked to this main one, meaning we get to write our code once. And then if we want an Android, we want to run it on Android, we can right click that, export it, and export it as an Android application and we have our Android application. Then for desktop, we can export it as a uh, runnable jar, and we have it that runs on all three major operating systems. So, you know, this definitely saves a whole lot of time for us. It's a really cool framework, and um, that's why I use it for a lot of development stuff that I do, personally. Um, and I, I'm still learning it, so um, I might do things a little bit differently than some other people that use it. Uh, some people use a lot of the, the library. Some people don't use a lot of it. And uh, we can kind of pick and choose what we want to do as we go. Um, and that's what, that's what else that is what else that's also really nice about it is that you aren't stuck to a, a confined uh, style or organization method. And so it makes it really, really easy for us. So um, to get ready for episode one, or I mean, should say episode two of our programming, um, you know, it's creating the game. You might as well just go ahead and clear out this code because we want our game to do more than just display a pretty picture. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take all that out, clear out the imports, and the imports are now gone. Go and save that, and um, it is now four in the morning. So I will uh, hopefully be doing the next episode of this tutorial tomorrow. Tomorrow is my goal. Um, don't hold me to it. I've got the homework, I've got class, but I will try to get this out for you guys tomorrow. 
um, where we will actually be starting on uh, putting this whole thing together. Hopefully this whole video wasn't too, too terribly boring for you guys. And um, yeah, enjoy it. And I uh, hope you guys like this series. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know um, however you feel like contacting me and letting me know, whether that be a message on YouTube, a comment down below, or just a general uh, tweet or something like that. Everyone uses the Twitters, right? But um, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to grab some sleep because I have class tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in another episode.